but you're, you know, you're sort of right. Sometimes it'll there'll be a hint in the name, like literature online. It gives you a big clue. Sometimes, like, they'll have like these cryptic names, like Esto Host. You don't really know unless you like know the company. So you know they're not always clear, but sometimes you'll get a hint just from the name of the database. So these, some of these databases, like like PsycInfo. Like, let's say we have JSTOR up here, LexisNexis. They're the kinds of tools, search tools, that only an academic library can provide. And the New York Public Library provides some of them too, because they're very expensive. It's not just like Google, where you know anybody can just walk up to that search engine, you know, type in. So these are things that libraries typically subscribe to. So. Um, we also believe that once you get, because you're comfortable using things like IMDB or Google or even Wikipedia, whatever tricks you learn in those, you know, to make those search engines work better for you, you can apply them to similar tools like PsycInfo, to these more academic tools. The trick is once you find results, figuring out which ones are really credible. You know, knowing how to distinguish which, which ones are relevant for your topic, um, which ones are written by like um, experts as opposed to maybe a fourth grader or you know somebody who could just post anything. So like being able to recognize and evaluate what's a good information source is really going to be important. So we're going to talk a little bit about like the nature of information. So. Just like um, every question's got a tool that's better for it, every type of information has an author, an audience, and a specific purpose. And it's a good idea to start thinking about some of those aspects of the information that you're going to be using. So over here on the left, we've got Sports Illustrated. So who do you think writes the articles in Sports Illustrated? Yes. Sports critics? Sports journalists? Yeah, yeah, sports journalists, yeah, yeah. Magazine writers. Um, who do you think the audience is? In Sports Illustrated, yes. People who play sports? Sports fans, yep, yep. Um, and what is the purpose of Sports Illustrated? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports fans to keep them up to date. Another purpose of it is, quite honestly, to sell magazines, you know? And to sell ads. Except, per, even, yeah, even more so. Um, so, on the other hand, over the right, we've got American Journal of Sports Medicine. So they're both talking about maybe sports injuries. But, who do we think, um, you know, while they've both got to do with that, they're written for different audiences and different purposes. So who do you think writes the articles in sports medicine? Yes. Um, you with us? Are you get a necklace right there? You? Yeah. Yeah. Um, medical journalists. Yeah. Yeah. Or even. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not so much in journalists, but we're talking about researchers, professors, doctors who are actually doing the research in the field. So they'll have credentials, and not just like have like the journalist might be just reading what other experts write. The actual experts are going to be writing in these journals. And likewise, audience for um, sports medicine? Yes, no sure. People curious in medicine in general? Like people want to learn how to, like doctors? And medical students? Yeah, for medical students. Exactly, other, you know, some, some that are maybe slightly less expert, some that look up to um, the people who are writing. Did somebody have something to add? Yes? People who might want to learn something just for the moment because something happens. Exactly. Again, a hypochondriac like me or not, like looking up to see, like, ooh, is that what I have? And, you know, really reading more and more about it. But, but it's not too likely that you're going to find somebody reading this on the beach, unless they're not, right? I mean, That's so true. it really, the, the audience here really is the professionals and those who have a background in the field or those who are, you know, studying to be that's yeah, a good point there. And so, and again, the purpose, 
of the American Journal of Sports Medicine, just to move things along. Um, you know, it's, Mary Beth just really basically described it. It's to share the results of studies, to um, advance, like, you know, treatment protocols, to, you know, give other medical professionals insight. Um, so more than just like sort of like entertaining and letting people keep up with like their favorite teams, you know, and you know how fast a particular sports person might be getting back into the game, you know, it's really furthering like medicine and scholarship. So we're going to move on a little bit and we want to begin the discussion by telling a research story. And today our story is going to begin with a man named Oliver Sacks. Anybody ever hear of him? Yeah, big um, yeah, seat Okay, so the reason he's holding a brain here is because he's a neurologist, and he's, um, which means that he studies the brain. He's also a physician, a best-selling author, um, and you know he's also a professor of neurology up at Columbia. So one of the books he's famous for is called The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. That's a funny title, isn't it? I mean, it's a very interesting book. So in this book, what he, um, Dr. Sachs tells the case studies of some patients who have some bizarre symptoms, some bizarre neurological disorders. Some of it, there's patients who have totally lost their memories at a young age. Um, some where even though some of you might have heard of like if someone has like an arm amputated you still have like feeling um you know like sort of that phantom phantom limb but um there's others who's they still have their arms but they they're, they're almost alien to them it doesn't like they can't tell their their brain can't tell their arm to like do something um there's other patients that can't recognize people they you know, either never had or no longer have that ability. So, in a couple of years ago, a couple of summers ago, Oliver Sacks wrote this article for the New Yorker. So, the New Yorker magazine, what do we think that one is? Popular or scholarly? That's a tough one. It's like, it's, it's, it's sort of like more scholarly than like people, than people <laughs> magazine. But, it's really a popular, you know, even though it's got like um, essays, it's still kind of halfway between, but veers on the popular. <clears throat> but anyhow, that's why a lot of people know Oliver Sacks, because he writes in some of these popular magazines. So you can see that, like, maybe you can see it's in small print, but face blind, why are some of us terrible at recognizing faces? So in this article, he reveals that he also, he suffers from this disease and it's sometimes called face blindness, or in the scientific community, it's got a Greek word. It's called prosopagnosia, prosopagnosia. And it, it's derived from the Greek word for either prosop is like faces or person, and agnosia means like loss of perception or no, not knowing. So um, what's interesting is that in this article, Oliver Sacks, while he's writing about it in a very accessible way, like I could read this on the beach, um, but he mentions scientific studies, but he just might mention them like in one little sentence. So here's a snippet from that New Yorker article, and he's mentioning Ken Nakayama at Harvard, you can see like that he's talking about a study and then his colleague Brad Duquesne, you know, someone in London. Um, and he's saying that in that article they found that it was common, but most you know, people don't typically report it, and this is what they found. Um, so that's just one snippet, and we could take this information. And if I was writing a paper in college, I couldn't just quote the New Yorker and say like, oh, this is the results of the study. I would really, if I was really doing due diligence, if I really wanted that A, 
I would be going to the actual study. And we've got two clues in here.